Hello everyone, my name is Raven, and welcome to Raven6754 Gaming, and welcome back to another lovely Left 4 Dead 2 tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to take a look at adding terrain. So what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of add some terrain that goes eh, basically down the middle, and I'm going to hit browse over here, and in the filter, I'm going to type in nature. And you can pick anything you want, really. I'm looking for something. Uh, uh, I forgot the name of it. Let's see. Dark dirt grass. OK, let's let's try this one. OK, so what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to make this 256. And I'm just going to drag it over here. I'm going to drag it up. And I'm going to make it 16 and make it flush with the floor. Um, yeah, that should do. I'll just hit enter. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this, deselect it, go into the brush tool. And we're just going to go straight down the line here until we get to the end. Now this might be a smidge excessive, but wait a minute. It seems off about that. There we go. Should be, uh... yeah, there we go. Okay, last one, perfect. Okay. So there's quite a lot here. Uh, this will be pretty fair amount of detail. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're just going to hold control and left click and select all of them, copy, and then move them over. Oh, interesting. There we go. Okay. So make sure they're, you know, all level with each other. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the uh, toggle texture tool, shift A, and I'm just going to hold control and we're only going to select the top faces here. Then we're going to go into displacement and we're going to hit create. And I'm just going to leave it a power of three. Actually, you know what? I guess I'll try a power of four. Okay. And now we have our displaced brushes here. This is basically, you know, effectively going to be our terrain. And I'm going, so there's a lot of different options here. So like you can control the different elevation, the scale of it. You can mask the grid, you know, so you don't show the grid, turn on the selection, so forth. Um, I'm going to invert the alpha here. Okay, good, 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 good. This has some grass. Uh, it's rather floating there though. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into material and I'm going to hit replace and then browse. I'm going to try to find a better one. Um, hmm. I think that was the one that I was already using. Oh, goodness, goodness, goodness. Blend rock, blend dirt, concrete, urban, urban dirt lawn. All right, let's try that. Let's hit OK. 92 textures are replaced. Go back to displacement, invert the alpha. And yeah, okay, that'll work. All right, so now we just get to do this all over again. And we'll just, sorry, I accidentally hit the wrong button there. Okay, so. We've kind of already seen what the invert alpha does. It basically flips the texture. Uh, paint alpha does this exact thing, except, you know, you paint it. Um, and we're going to look at that in just a second. Sewing effectively, you know, sews the, the faces together. Um, and we'll look at that here in a little bit. Um, and you can also remove faces if you like. So you can just select it and then... I think it might actually have to only have one selected there, but let's go to paint geometry first. So we're going to turn on auto sew. And the reason we're going to do that is if we 
start painting, you know, without auto so on. Now, since it's selected, it seems like, you know, it's, it's all raising at the same height. Uh, but if you were say working on one, you know, you can actually like raise it and then they're not together anymore, which is basically what this sew button does right here. Um, now I'm going to hit control Z to undo that, but we're going to turn on auto sew so that it'll keep all of our displacement together. And then what we're going to do here is I'm just going to, now this isn't going to be perfect, of course, but I'm going to change the radius to 30. And I'm going to set the distance to three. The distance controls the strength effectively. And I'm just going to push this down into the uh, underneath the brush there. It won't look super, super great, but we'll go through and try and, you know, tidy it up a little bit as we go. We're just creating something basic, you know, when you're working on your actual, you know, final map, you can go through and uh, take the time to make it look super spiffy and pretty. But uh, I don't think anybody wants to, uh, you know, see me basically uh, spend, you know, a half hour here. Maybe you do. I don't know. Guess I shouldn't assume. Okay, and then we'll do the other side. And again, if you need to, you can turn off the selection and the grid even. And then you can go back to paint geometry there. Oh, undo that. Okay. All right, I'm going to raise this up just a little bit, actually. So another thing you can do when you are in the displace mode, obviously, of course, you have your smoothing tool, which um, let's do it over here. You can smoothen this out ever so slightly. Probably not going to notice too much here, but it'll try to smoothen out, you know, if you have some, like, really harsh and try to create, like, a nice, you know, soft uh, edge between the two. Or, you know the radius of the brush. You might have to increase the brush radius. But another really nice thing you can do is you can hold shift and then left click and then raise based on the radius. So for example, I could just increase this massively and then just raise or lower. And as you can see, it keeps it actually fairly smooth. Um, and what I was going was painting it, uh, which does not create the best results. So I'm going to set this down to 100. Open that back up there. And I'm going to just hold shift. And I am just going to just ever so slightly uh, try and actually, you know what? I will push that all the way down because what we're going to do here is we're going to put water in here. Um, not in this tutorial, but in a later tutorial. So I'm just going to go through here, just holding shift. We're just going to put ourselves a little, just a little waterway here. You could even change the size and, you know, go through and smoothen it out and so forth. I'm just going to occasionally put my, uh, my brush in a slightly different spot to try and get it to have like a, not so circular of a look there. Uh, we'll go through and use the smoothing tool next. Okay. And now I'm going to set this to 50. And then I'm going to open up the smoothing tool. And I'm just going to hold uh, left click. And we're just going to go through smoothen up the edges there just a little bit. Yeah, I didn't even do it there since I'm right there. Why not? Try to get the bank to look you know, a little more 
well, smooth, and not have such harsh edges. Okay, we'll go down here. That looks pretty good. So now what we're going to want to do is we are going to want to go into the paint alpha. And we're just going to set the value to max. And what we're going to do here, I'm going to change the brush to brush 5 because it is a much larger brush, actually. Maybe, yeah, brush 5. And I'm going to go straight down the middle there. Um, now, with it set to 255, it's not really going to do uh, a whole lot of blending. But what it will do is it will kind of clean up and we'll get some of that grass out. And we just want like the border as well to have just a little bit. It's okay if you miss a little bit as well. You know, make it look a little more natural. It's not so perfect. Okay. And then I think I'll go to one. Actually, let's go to two because one is extremely slow. And I'm just going to try to like paint along the edge here wherever I see like some grass just, you know, hovering. Okay. And then I'm going to open up the paint geometry, select these smooth. And I'll just try to smoothen this a little bit. Okay. Go back to paint alpha. Then zip around and see if we can't find any here and we'll go and back to the paint geometry smooth and we'll just try to smoothen it out a bit there back to paint alpha awesome and we're just going to do the same thing here Okay, I think we have it mostly. Um, it's floating, but you know, what are you gonna do? So let's go on ahead and close this, and then let's create two new brushes over here. Uh, let's see, let's just make them 256 by 256. It should be right there, perfect. And we're just gonna make another one. We're gonna look at this so feature here and what it does. So I'm gonna select both of these. And we're just going to create a displacement. And then I'm just going to turn the mask back on. And now I'm just going to have this one here selected. And I'm going to raise lower. And as you can see, you know, it raises it up and it's got a huge hole in it. And that looks terrible. But if we turn on auto, so it still doesn't do anything. Well, that's because we don't have the other uh, face selected. If we select both of these and then turn on paint geometry we get what we had before where it's all attached. But what if you have different displacements? Like let's say you want to do something with this one, but of course, you know, you don't want this one selected. So you just click the displacement, paint geometry, raise it up, go to material, select the other one, displacement, and then you hit sew, and then it does its best to attach the two together. We'll just invert the alpha there so we don't have you know, as much grass. And there you have it. I just, I just wanted to to cover that particular one uh, specifically. So that is a, um, that's how you use displacements. Uh, later on, we're gonna have an even more advanced tutorial on displacements. So this is not the final one, but displacements are actually very simple to use. Just, you know, as always, I encourage you to just go out and just try new stuff with them. And, you know, you never know what you might do. And of course, um, I'll look in the, uh, I always, want you to know that you should always check because I always have a like wiki links to like the tools that we use so that you can have a reference not just the video but a text and picture reference on how to use some of these tools so thanks everyone for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe and hit that subscribe button and of course that bell because you know you have to hit the bell as well uh, if you'd like to support the channel you can join and become a member get access to a whole bunch of videos early as well, uh, a whole bunch of other perks. And I hope you guys have a lovely day. Oh, and oh, right, of course, how could I ever forget the Discord? If you have any issues, comments, or anything like that, uh, feel free to put them down below or join the Discord. 
and have a good one, everyone. And I will see you all in the next one.